Tim, it's really nice to meet you. Uh, big oh. fan of your work. Oh, uh, thank you. Thank you. It's yeah. good to talk to you, my man. Yeah, everything from, you know, your, your, the films you've done in the comic book industry, Barbershop, Think Like a Man, big fan of Queens also. I know you directed a couple of episodes. Oh, and, nice. And uh, now you're moving on to one of my favorite genres, which is uh, horror. Tell me, tell me, why did you want to do a film like The Blackening? Well, it's interesting. I, I read the script and I was a producer on the project. And we, we figured we'd just find like, you know, an up and coming director, just somebody that um, could take the helm. And I read the, the draft, the, la the latest draft that they sent me after they'd been working on it. And it just made me laugh. And most importantly, I, I always wanted to dabble in horror, but it was always one of those things where I had to find the right, the right thing. And um, I must admit, I read this. I thought it was so clever. The characters were so much fun. And then the situation was just um, good, you know? And so... <laughs> Once I read this, I really kind of raised my hand and said, guys, what if I directed it? And the team kind of looked at me and, you know, it was kind of like one of those uh, stop, stop effing with us. And I, <laughs> I said, no, 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 I'm, I'm serious. I just love the script that much. And they said, please. And it's just one, been one of the, the best experiences of my career. Now, when you when you started or uh, chose to direct it, did you guys already have cast members in mind or, or um, was that still something you were looking for? Yeah, no, we had no cast members in mind. I mean, there would be certain people that we thought, oh, it'd be great to work with them in this. But what was great about this um, experience is being able to just start from scratch and just look for the best actors for the role. And that's what was fun. And it didn't matter name or no name or what. We just looked for the best actors. And um, we got this amazing group of um, thespians who came in and, um, you know, just kind of... Uh, just kind of, they just merged well together. They became friends really fast. They, you know, one of the things that this movie hinges on is that you believe these, um, these guys have known each other for a decade or more. And when most of these uh, actors did not know one another and once they got on set, and cause all of this was done on Zoom, you know, even doing chemistry mm -hmm. reads and all, all on Zoom. So when they finally got in, in you know, um, in the same place, they just hit it off. And I thought that energy kind of creeps up on into the, the screen and into the, the movie. And I just thought uh, we just had so much fun. So this is one of, the, one of those rare occasions where you can just kind of uh, pick who you want. Now, I asked that question because uh, something that, that, that really stood out to me in the film is the diversity between a race. So yes, they're all African-American. They're so different. Uh, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that and, and maybe how you guys went about, you know, people's traits and, and, you know, what makes them who they are? Surely. Look, it was um, it was uh, specifically uh, planned for that. You know, the the writing first, Dwayne and Tracy wrote a, an incredible script and that script had characters that were pretty, um, pretty spe specific and well developed. And what we wanted to show is that we're not a monolith. And I think any culture can. Um, can mirror, can mirror that that uh, expression is that inside of our culture there's so many versions of us you know and even in the film we created there's more versions than what we were able to represent and so we were able to kind of um, have a foundation for that and then find actors who then brought their personal you know stories to it and I you know it, it I'm we're really proud to hear you say that that you saw that in the film because it was really important for us to represent as many um, versions of us as we could, but also know that there's more, you know, there's even more to be represented. And, and that's what uh, I believe uh, is one of the strengths of the movie is that you see a, um, a group of individuals that although the same race um, are really individual, you know, are just really, um, you know, specific to them. Yeah, and I mean, creating the, a mix between, a fusion between the two genres of comedy and horror could be quite difficult because you need to find a good balance. You need to have a couple of good jump scare moments and believable, you know, spooky, uh, spooky things here and there. But also you got to be able to laugh out loud. H how do you find that balance in order to make a, a full feature film? You know, it's, it's fun for me. There's like a fear in it, but like a fear that I'm extremely comfortable in. You know, anytime I've, I feel, I feel very um, comfortable in a comedy, but anytime I've added Ro ro romance or you know romantic comedy or an action comedy and in this situation a horror comedy you have to give that genre a, a lot of respect and you have to know that anybody coming into this movie who is a horror fan is going to want certain things um delivered 
And so we take that, uh, you know, we take that um, uh, very seriously, or I do. And so in this, in kind of like doing this merge, um, I'm gonna steal your word, fusion, in this fusion for um, comedy and horror, um, I just find it um, pretty fun, you know? It sometimes stuff works, you know, uh, and sometimes it doesn't. And what's great about comedy and horror is the audience is the true judge and jury, you know? Mm -hmm. They're either, in, in when you're doing certain things that are supposed to be funny, if the audience doesn't laugh, uh, it's gotta go, you know, if it's supposed <laughs> to be. And when it comes to horror, if it's, um, if it's supposed to be scary and you're not scaring anyone, you either have to dig deeper or you've gotta, or it's gotta go. And that's what I love about these two genres. They seem to really follow some of the same rules and um, they're very communal uh, genres. And when you get a group of people together, uh, the audience tells you uh, what's working and what's not. Now, it's one thing to, to see the screenplay. It's another thing to create a physical version of this game and some of the some of the um, things they go th through some uh, and the challenges or whatever that that the villain puts them through. Uh, what was that like to actually see it physically and to see some of these uh, moments play out for you? Uh, yeah, specifically. Yeah. Like like the board game itself. We had a lot of fun with the board game. If you're familiar with the original uh, short, it did not have a board game, but we had to discuss like, how do we manifest, if it's gonna be a game, how do we manifest it? And so, you know, and it went through a couple of, you know, iterations. I mean, at one point it was just cards or just that, but we kind of uh, settled on this kind of quote unquote, like monopoly slash, you know, kind of um, version of the, of the game. And it just, it just um, kind of gave us the foundation to, to make this movie. I'm really happy that the writers were able to find these questions that, and trust me, there were so many more. There, there were a few that didn't make the, the cut and there were more that we thought of. Um, but I, I just found it to be kind of a, just a fun kind of refreshing way to, to have a killer interact with the, those that he's trying to do harm to. And um, when you look, you know, uh, I hope one day we're able to kind of uh, share more of the questions. It just <laughs> was a, it just was a really fun way that the writers kind of kind of came up with, and then for me to then design something that visually um, um, shows you where we're going, it's it's a lot. It's familiar, but it's kind of like a when you think of you know Monopoly. The Monopoly games can kind of go crazy with a family playing them, but not many of them. Uh, well, I hope not. Not many of them end in uh, possibly getting killed. So, <laughs> well, I, I I don't play Monopoly because I get really aggressive. So there you go. That's probably the closest. Yeah. That's probably as close as you're gonna get. Uh, now, um, in speaking of your your antagonist, your quote unquote monster for the film, were there other other versions of it maybe that that were a little different looking than what you guys settled for in the end? Uh, we we kind of went through uh, different ideas of what the mask might be like. We were trying to do something that was uh, fairly original, you know, original to us. But at the same time, because we are kind of, uh, I don't like to use the word spoof because I don't believe that that's where we 100% went. But we did know we were making a comedy. And... Um, we knew we wanted to make the mask familiar, but but original. You know, yeah. I know that sounds crazy to mix those words together, but kind of a, you know, but you know, because in us having fun with it, we wanted you to to know what we were kind of um, taking from. You know, but we also had a lot of freedom in, in what we were creating. We wanted to be sure that the mask for these characters was, um, uh, for lack of a better word, offensive. Um, <laughs> yeah. We wanted to be sure that when they saw it, it was like, what the what the hell. And um, I think we achieved it and, you know, we had a lot of fun with it and we kind of landed on something that we thought um, uh, visually worked. Now, as you're making this film, were any thoughts now on moving on and, and moving into that world of horror and making a full on serious horror film? Uh, I, I'd like to say yes. Um, I had so much fun making this movie um, that it kind of like sparked a little, a little thing in me in terms of, one, just getting, getting just, I already had respect for directors that are able to pull this off incredibly, but this one, um, in making it, you kind of go, wow, this, this genre, there's a lot of fun in it, just as much fun as I have in comedy, horror, there's, it's so much fun to think of ways to scare someone or to think of those situations that would make you jump out your, um, jump out your chair or either squ squirm in it, so I would probably say that um, you might see me in messing with this genre a little bit more. Okay, that makes me really happy to hear. Like I said, I'm a, a fan of a lot of your previous work, so I'd be curious awesome. to see what kind of what kind of monster, what kind of theme you you would uh, 
he would put that around. And it's interesting because, you know, you know, horror and comedy sometimes don't necessarily get that critics love. But like you said before, it doesn't matter. It's what the audience care about, correct? I've been working, I've been dealing with that my entire career. You know, when it comes to comedy, when it comes to horror, although when it's really good, it just works um, and the audiences love it, it, it doesn't get a lot of critic love. And that's, and it's okay because ultimately um, I kind of really love seeing audiences when you see 300, 400 people inside of a room laughing at the same time, or in this case, you know, jumping at the same time, um, it's the best feeling in the world. And I, and I must admit, I kind of double down on uh, making audiences um, feel something. And anytime I've done that, um, I don't really care what the critics say. <laughs> yeah, as, as sometimes even as a fan, I, I don't either. I gotta yes. go in and just make my own opinion. I hope everybody else does the same. Tim, thank you so much for your time. It's actually a real privilege to speak with you uh, just because of, like I said, so many films that I've enjoyed of yours oh. throughout the years and uh, Blackening is just another one of those. Oh, thank you, my man. Such a great talk. All right, take care. Have a good one. Thanks, man.